So in the process of respiration, whatever the energy is produced, the energy is stored in energy rich molecules like ATP. So the term ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. So this is a molecule in which the energy is stored. So during the process of cellular respiration, whenever the energy is released, that energy is packed in the bond of adenosine triphosphate. This is adenosine molecule 3 phosphates. So in the last phosphate bond, in the third phosphate bond, the energy is stored. So now this is triphosphate, adenosine triphosphate. So whenever energy is required, wherever energy is required inside the cells, the ATP is supplied. So in the ATP, this phosphate bond breaks and energy is released. Do you know how much energy is released by breaking of one phosphate bond in ADP, ATP? That is 7200 calories of energy is released. So when the bond is broken, now the ATP triphosphate becomes ADP, adenosine diphosphate plus inorganic phosphate. So the bond is broken. So whenever the bond is bro broken, then the energy is released out. It is supplied. So in such a way, in our cells, the energy is packed in special molecules called as adenosine triphosphate. So now let us look at the differences between the two different types of respiration we discussed. So again in the cellular respiration, we discussed that there are two different types of respiration takes place. One is aerobic respiration. The other one is anaerobic respiration. That means the respiration which takes place in presence of oxygen. We call it as aerobic respiration. The respiration that takes place in absence, it is anaerobic respiration. We see anaerobic respiration in certain organisms like bacteria and yeast. And we see the aerobic respiration in all the animals in which they breathe the oxygen from the atmosphere. In their cases, in their bodies, aerobic respiration takes place. So whatever it may be, either aerobic or anaerobic, the first part of the cellular respiration is common. Say, glucose is the food molecule which is to be oxidized to produce energy. So the glucose is to be burned, combusted to produce the energy. So the glucose is the starting material or the substrate in cellular respiration. I already told you the site of cellular respiration inside the cell, mitochondria are there and cytoplasm is there. So where does this first step takes place? The first part of the cellular respiration takes place in the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm what happens? The glucose is converted to a substance called as pyruvate, pyruvate or pyruvic acid. This part is called as glycolysis. So this is the first part. It is common in both aerobic respiration as well as anaerobic respiration. So the first part of the cellular respiration is common. Now let us see what happens hereafter. If you see that oxygen is available, aerobic respiration takes place. Aerobic respiration in presence of oxygen. So in this aerobic respiration, energy is produced and what else is produced along with energy? Energy is produced plus water is produced plus carbon dioxide is produced and certain amount of heat is also produced. So energy, water, carbon dioxide, these are the byproducts of aerobic respiration. So in this aerobic respiration, large amount of energy is released. So when the respiration takes place in presence of oxygen, huge amount of energy from the food. And the aerobic respiration, that is the second part of the aerobic respiration, that is called as Krebs cycle, it takes place in the mitochondria. So inside the mitochondria, the energy is released in the form of ATP. So that is the reason mitochondria are called as powerhouse of the cell. So huge amount of energy. Now let us see in absence of oxygen, anaerobic respiration, anaerobic respiration. 
no oxygen. Now what happens? How the energy is produced? In this case also energy is produced. In certain cases energy is produced along with energy lactic acid lactic acid is produced energy plus lactic acid example so what is the example here bacteria sometimes in our body also this anaerobic respiration takes place when there is no oxygen so in anaerobic respiration one case lactic acid is produced and in the second case ethanol ethanol is a kind of alcohol plus carbon dioxide plus energy is released example yeast so you know that yeast is a kind of fungus unicellular fungus so in this case ethanol is produced in one case in case of yeast in case of bacteria lactic acid is produced but in both the cases the energy produced from one molecule of glucose is less when compared to aerobic respiration I already mentioned it in aerobic respiration when one molecule of glucose is oxidized large amount of energy is released more number of ATP are produced whereas in case of anaerobic respiration less amount of energy is produced but along with that some compounds are produced chemical compounds what is produced here lactic acid and in case of yeast ethanol or ethyl alcohol is produced so that anaerobic respiration in which alcohols are produced we call that process as fermentation so here ethanol is produced by a process called as fermentation right we have seen that glucose molecule in the process of cellulose respiration cellular respiration it produces carbon dioxide plus water plus energy So this is the cellular respiration that is the aerobic respiration which generally takes place in plants and animals. But for this process oxygen is very important. It takes place only in presence of oxygen that is glucose plus oxygen. But sometimes when oxygen is deprived a condition called as oxygen depth oxygen is not available in such situations energy is produced in the body of animals without oxygen how let us see so when you are going for a running race that you have to run a long distance say 100 meters or 200 meters then how do you run to run your muscles need lot of energy from where do you get that energy you might have taken food but at the same time, when you are suddenly doing some sternus exercise, immediately all the food cannot be converted into energy because that much of amount of oxygen is not available in your body, in your muscles. So the oxygen is available to your body slowly. So when you start running, immediately you don't pant, you don't gasp. So in the starting, energy is supplied to your muscles. How it is supplied? The oxygen is not present. Even though you breathe for a number of times, that oxygen may not be sufficient, but still you get energy to run. How the energy, how the ATP are produced if oxygen is less or without oxygen? So in our body, apart from this mechanism, apart from this aerobic cellular respiration, in which energy is produced, carbon dioxide is produced by the complete oxidation of glucose molecules, Parallelly, there is one more mechanism by which energy is supplied instantly to our muscles. Say, in absence of oxygen, there is no oxygen. The glucose is converted to lactic acid plus energy. Lactic acid and energy. I already told you in anaerobic respiration, from glucose energy can be produced in two different ways if glucose is completely oxidized to carbon dioxide and water more energy is produced but here the glucose is not totally oxidized it is partly oxidized so in this partially oxidation the partial uh, combustion respiration energy is produced but other compound called as lactic acid is produced 
but anyway it is serving the purpose even though lactic acid is produced energy is supplied to the muscles for instant work so you can observe that when we do the strenuous exercise like running or climbing so many steps or going for a brisk walking or jogging or cycling pedaling a cycle so if you do that exercise continuously vigorous exercise your muscles get pain so how why your muscles get pain that is due to the accumulation of the substance called as lactic acid accumulation of lactic acid in the muscles lead to muscle fatigue so what happens if this lactic acid gets accumulated in your muscles what would be the result what happens to your body so when lactic acid is accumulated in our muscles we get muscle pain muscle fatigue but if we relax for some time slowly this lactic acid is converted to glucose so the lactic acid go undergoes some other metabolism in which it is further utilized further converted to other compounds so slowly the lactic acid concentration decreases in your muscles and in your in your blood so in this way we have an alternate mechanism in our body which produces energy even though in absence of oxygen the temporary deficit of oxygen which we call the condition as oxygen debt oxygen debt condition 